recognize the rock behind your rip. He's the he's the the Holy Spirit. You know, he's the influencer. He's the one. I'm going to cut your bucket too out here, but when I thought about that, he's our rock because he's our foundation. He's the solid thing mm -hmm. that caused the ripple, that caused my change, Ricky, that caused my gospel. Yeah. The Holy Spirit caused my transformation. He's that rock. It took something. It took something to motivate. It took something to start moving on the inside of me. And that's the Spirit of God. That I'm, then now I'm able to to do anything. Or the, or the, script, the scripture said, you can do all things. Christ. That strength. That, that's apostle. I want to keep going. Okay. Right no, that's not but, it. Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you know. Go ahead. Okay, okay. You'll let me know. Okay. okay. Um, but, but, but that's when we use the scripture uh, down there. I can do all things through Christ. Because he, he, he started the motion. He he started it. He he pulled me. He 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 pulled me in. Or he pulled me out. He motivated me. I could do all things through him. So he's my rock. And I know it seems crazy. I find these crazy topics, y'all, but they seem to stick with you. <laughs> hey, Amen. He's the rock behind my ripple. And I want to see the effects of God and in, in my life into others. Hey, Amen. Because the rock hit and it created many ripples. Hey, Amen. The Spirit of God hits us, created. Many ideas, many things that we can do. There's nothing where where where, where limitless like him. We can do all things. So I just thank God this morning, just for the you know hot quick topic that I, I understand my assignment and I understand who's the rock, who's the force, who who. If it had not been for him, I couldn't do anything that I do, and and still to this day. I'm still like God, me, out of all people, I don't know if anybody else on the line, you know, I come from some rough places, I got some rough edges that he smooths out, um, um, I, I ain't talking about Pastor Paul edges, he, he, he has some educated edges, and, you know, that's all right, you know what I mean, but, but I'm talking about not in being, not in the church, but coming into it, or not in the kingdom and coming into it. It's amazing how he turned my life around. Once again, it created the ripples of love that I'm able to love people beyond they love me. You know, the ripples of being able to forgive. Hmm. Forgive, forgive. When people intentionally hurt you, that's true forgiveness. You could forgive someone. Oh, that was an accident. But when they intentionally betrayed you, like Judas, I know I have to screw to the spirit, the ripple. That ripple of unforgiveness, that ripple of forgiveness, where I'm able to forgive because I, you know, um, as I want someone to forgive me. I'm able, I'm, I'm able to love. I'm able to love beyond my limits. See, my forgiveness and my love had limits. My, I don't know about some of you. And my, my frustration got limits, but, you know, but, but once we came into Christ, you know, his ripples showed me that. He loved me in Romans 5, 8, Ricky. He said, well, he said, he said, you know, I loved you while you was yet sinner, Jelani. What you, what? What you mean? I loved you before you even, and then First John said, hey, we love him because he first loved us first. So, Lord, this morning, let the ripple of unconditional love that a God they love flow through me to others. And I'm going to be transparent. I had to. This morning, I called Ricky. I'm in this truck, and as you know, I'm bigger than a other car, so you got to let me get by, help me by, and the guy was getting all frustrated and that, and I, you know, he poked his chest out, I poked my chest out, you know, then I put my chest back in. And it had to be like, you know, we, we got to get by. You got to go to work. I'm at work. He was kind of nasty. Well, I see all day. And you know, in my mind, I didn't verbalize, but I said, oh, yeah, I get paid by the hour. You trying to get to work, I'm already at work. But lo and behold, I had to let my show, show the ripple of compassion. I got out my truck, because he wasn't going to get out. And got out my truck and said, we, 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 we got to make this work. We got to come to a conclusion. Because you got to go to work, and I need to continue work. And you need to get your son to school. 
But if you please get out your truck, and guess what, y'all? He got he wasn't gonna get out at first, but then he got, you know what? You know, but that's that ripple of the passion that, you know, I had to tap into or even forgiveness because he was raised some bad slurs or something. He was just being angry. But I thank the Lord that you know, I realized and I thought Ricky had that boy, but there was a bigger picture. But he, he was the rock. Amen. Jesus was the rock. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, Jelani Brown. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to the hands of Apostle William. Amen. 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 God bless us to all. I like that man of God. I like that. I like that. I like that, and I thank God for you. Uh oh, you caught a caught a little bit. I thank, thank God. God. I, I heard you. you. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. And um, giving good. God praise for that word in your testimony. Thank God for that. Amen. And I like the way you hooked that up, tied that. Man, you did that thing. Amen. And I appreciate that. To God Amen. To God be the glory for everything that the Lord is doing. Amen. Uh, Mother Lewis, it's so good being here one more again. And all of you, the Lord's people, and to get on the line and have fellowship with all of you. Amen. I appreciate God. I appreciate um, Sister Melissa for that prayer. Amen. I was listening. I was not immediately in the area, but I could hear it from a distance. And I thank God for the woman of God in that prayer. Thank God for what my ears have heard. And, and I heard you, Brother Ricky. Thank God for you, sir. Thank God. Amen. Uh, you're on the line. And I trust that, amen, the Lord would do great things, greater things in your lives and everyone. Oftentimes, we, we, we come on the line, and this is just in general. In general, you know, it is easy for us to go to a church or be on a prayer line and, and listen to others pour out. You know, and then I mean, I mean, listen, and they listen to us pour out. They listen to us pour out, but then after we have poured out, um, when it's when when it's uh, um, their time to come forward, we're doing other things, and, and we don't want that to be a, a part of who we are because that's not who we are. So we have to ensure that uh, we make time for others as well. Yes, it's good for them to hear us. I mean, yes, it's good for them to hear us, but we want to also hear them. Amen. We want to hear what they have to say as well. And because they have a, a, a word to share and it's going to help them and us. My pastor, uh, Superintendent Welton McGee out of Seaside, California, before he died, I, um, or long before he died, when I was fellowshipping with them out there, uh, he told the whole body this, but I took it personal. He says, uh, how you treat others is going to come back. And how you treat your pastor is going to come back. Somebody is going to treat you the same way that you treat them. I was being late for service and wasn't given proper courtesy. I was giving courtesy, best I knew how. But, you know, I was a little standoffish guy. Still had that little shy swag going on. A little shy, you know, just want to sit back in the back. And then when he said that thing right there, that be careful how you treat others because it's going to come back. And then he said, definitely be careful how you treat your pastor because when you become pastor, somebody's going to treat you the same way you've been treating them. I said, oh, Lord, help me to do right. Help me to do right. Not better. Not better, but do right. Because when you're doing better, you might already be uh, in the wrong, just do right. Just do right. Just always do right. You won't have to worry about making it better. Just do the right thing. God requires us to do right. Amen. Just do right. When you do right by God, trust me, others are going to be blessed thereby. So I'm, I'm so excited about this opportunity to be able to share with you my, my family uh -huh. and, and to be able to encourage you to encourage one another I, I was listening to overseer Jelani and as he began to share in the word of the Lord amen I, I thank God of that that every moment like when he's driving a vehicle or just on the job whatever he's doing 
make every moment count where you are thinking about the Lord's goodness, meditating on the Lord, doing something where God gets the praise out of it. Amen. I thank God for that. Every moment should be a moment where we allow God to have the center stage in our life. So again, thank God for all of you, the Lord's people. Thank God for uh, Overseer Timmy. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving that name. Could be Overseer Timmy, Overseer Margaret, uh, both of them. And somewhere, somewhere, at some point, they're going to be listening in not far away. Maybe on a replay, uh, somehow or another, they're going to be listening in. So we may not always hear them on the line on, th on Thursdays like we would desire, a, but, but uh, we don't take it for granted. For all those who amen, hold, hold a key spot on the lifeline and have been fellowshipping with us, we want to give acknowledgement to them. Amen. So <clears throat> one more again, I thank God for each of you. Amen. Today, I, I don't want to give a a, a lesson. We, we can we can definitely uh, um, learn from it. We can make it out of a teachable moment. We, we can. But I just want to come by today and look at this for a, a moment to speak a word of blessing into your life. I want to just speak a bless a word of blessings over each of you. Uh, but I'll do it. I'll do it uh, corporately. Yeah, I'll do it corporately instead of individually. But you, the individual, you, the receiver of it, if you would so kindly make it personal to you, if you would make it personal, then hear the voice of the Lord as I give you this word, as I give you this word. Uh huh. Uh, um. And the word that I want to give you is God hired you for this anointing. <laughs> God hired you for this anointing. That's right. God hired you for this anointing. God saw you standing. God saw you aimlessly standing worthlessly standing, doing your own thing standing, and went after you because you almost got snuffed under by another that was not God. You almost went down a rabbit hole that God did not ordain. You almost were blindsided, bamboozled, hoodwinked by the enemy. He was drawing you. You were influenced by the club life. You were influenced by uh -huh, trying to be a playboy, a playgirl, a little, little pretty girl, a little pretty boy. You were influenced by the fast life of sin. You, you, you were influenced doing you. And uh, the Lord had to hire you in your mess, in your doing you. You ran into some thicket. You ran into the thicket of the rabbit hole. And the Lord had to pull you out, shake you, so that you can realize, hold up, hold up. This is a God thing. And it's bigger than me. It's a God moment. And it is a God moment. And it is bigger than you. <laughs> but you know why? Let me tell you why God hired you for this anointing. God hired you for this anointing because uh, God has already hired a man to build an ark. And that was in his dispensation. A whole lot of people didn't come to the Lord at that moment, but on his family got saved from the flood but as a result of his family being saved from the flood nations of people have come out of that God doesn't need another Abraham because he already spoken to Abraham called him out of uh, Mesopotamia and on the journey he, he, he'd been through some hard 
time. He lost the son there while he was coming out. Matter of fact, not him. His father, his father, his father lost the son in the midst of coming out of Mesopotamia. God spoke to Abraham's father and said, get your family out. I know it's not recorded like that in the scripture, but when you look at the scripture, you'll see that uh, 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 Abraham's father was already bringing his family out. He had Abraham. He had Lot. He had Haran. Uh, 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 and he had all of them. And they were coming out of, uh, uh, of Mesopotamia. And his, father, his son Haran died in a place, and they called it Haran, he died there, and when he died there, looked like his father stayed there in that place of his hurt. He stayed there, and it is so easy for us to stay in the place where God called us out of when you are hurting. You, you, God called you out of a place, you're moving from the place, but you get hurt in a place, and then you're licking your wounds in that place. You, you feel I have to have a memorial, and another memorial, and another, another memorial. And you stay within that place of hurt and years have passed, over 200 years passed before uh, Abraham's father died. And then, see, as long as Abraham's father was living, God didn't speak to Abraham because God deal with order. God didn't deal with Abraham while his father was living and said, take your father. No, he's, he waited and then when when Abraham's father died, then he went to Abraham and says, now gather your family and come out of the land of the Chaldees. And then Abraham start doing what his father could not do or did not do. He picks up from where his father left off and did what his father did not do, brought them out. We know the rest of that story. So God doesn't need another Abraham. We know about uh, Deborah. Uh, we know about uh, 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 all the others, and God doesn't need another Deborah in this hour. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. God doesn't need another Deborah. Deborah did some awesome things, and we are we are marveled at looking at her. And not only that, but then when you look at uh, what God did to to to, to Sir Samuel, oh Samuel, Samuel, not one word would fall from his mouth. Not one word would go aimlessly as if without order and just do its own thing. But every word that the man uh, 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 spoke, uh -huh, that word would go forth and, 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 and bring forth that thing that he has spoken. Not one word fell aimlessly to the ground. God doesn't need another Samuel like that. That was in his dispensation. Yeah, we're not going back into Samuel's dispensation. And Saul, we're not going to talk about Saul, but David comes on the scene in his dispensation, does some marvelous things, but yet holding together no matter how good you've done and God protects you and God went to war with you and, and gave you Goliath and, and gave you those other things that you had when you had some moments to yourself. You didn't know how to manage the moment to yourself and... There you end up in the process, as time went on, end up killing a man because you were trying to hide your sin. But yet God didn't give up on you and still called you the apple of his eye because that's the power of forgiveness. And we learn lessons from all of those who have come before, uh, uh, before us. Yeah, Nehemiah and... Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea, oh God, and all of these was great men in their day. I hadn't even touched on the women there as God has used them. I hadn't even touched on uh, when, when the men came to the city and they're about to break down the wall and the woman went, ran to an uh, uh, old mother came to the wall. Hey, 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 hey. Is it you? Uh huh. Uh, I think it said. I think it was Joab. I forgot the name of uh, who, who the mother was. Says, uh, says, uh, is, "Is it you, his captain?" Yes, I am. And, and says, "Hold up, hold up. What, what, what are you doing?" But we we're, we're chasing Cicero. You, you're chasing Cicero. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're chasing him. He 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 disrespected the king, and so we just want him. 
Well, and, and they said, but there's a way that we do things right here. You may not have order there, but in this city, yeah, don't hear me. In this dispensation, there's order. In this dispensation, you include the women. In this dispensation, you just simply talk to us. In this dispensation, don't you know that we're your helpmates? And if you talk to us, we'll help you. Just make us privy to what you're doing. If you're in battle, talk to us. Just allow us to help you. We know what to do. And so he shared with the woman of that city what they were doing. And the woman said, stay right here. Don't worry about it. We know what to do. And when we're finished, we'll throw his head over the wall. God, help me here. Because the men took the time to share with the woman of God what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From that, from that, because they shared it. Oh, my God. After they've shared it, uh-huh. When they shared what they were doing. My God, the women went in. They went in and they dealt with the corporate. They found him. They caught him. They cut off his neck, throw the head over the wall. And then they were able to go back and deal with whatever they were doing. Isn't that a marvelous thing? Because somewhere God allowed it to be so. Amen. God allowed that thing to happen like that. And, and, and that just one of the women, because they didn't keep her out. It's just one of the women. God allowed that thing to, to happen his way. <sighs> Jesus. And in the process of time, uh, here's a man by the name of, y'all know I'm just skipping people, but I'm including some people. Skipping some people and including some people because we know in the, in, in, in the lineage of the Bible, it's more to it than that. But there, here comes a man that he is a prophet of his day, but he's not like Isaiah. He's not like Elijah or Elisha. He's not like Jeremiah. He's a different uh -huh, breed of prophet. This prophet uh, is eating, eating locusts and wild honey. This prophet, you know, he comes out in the wilderness. This prophet, he's a wilderness dweller. His, his, his father is a priest. Yeah, and his mother loves God, loves him, loves him with everything. She can stand on the things of God. Hallelujah. I'm having little uh, difficulties in some areas, but that's okay. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through it. And so just, just pray for us. We're going to get through this thing. Amen. Um, hallelujah. And so here comes John the Baptist, another cut from a different level, a different dispensation, a different man, locust and wild honey from the wilderness. He's preaching something that Elijah didn't preach, Elisha didn't preach, Samuel didn't preach. He's preaching and talking about something others did not talk about. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's sharing uh, 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 of the Messiah, is getting ready to come. A Messiah is getting ready to come. He's talking to them about this and they're listening. He's telling them to come. Hey Amen. Bring something worthy to, for repentance. Bring fruit worthy of repentance. And as they're bringing this, they're coming before the man of God and he's able to tell them about a Messiah coming. A Messiah is coming on the scene whose shoe latches he's not even worthy to stoop down and unloose. He's not worthy to do that. He's not able. He's not capable of doing this thing. My God. So the people are listening. The people are listening. The people are following. He have his own followers. He's doing some Elisha, uh, uh, Elisha and Elijah didn't do. He's baptizing people. My God, a different dispensation. Well, even at that, even at that, God didn't call you for that. God didn't call you for those things. Now, if you want to baptize, baptize. You can baptize them into repentance. But this man, John, 
was a man before his time and he became a forerunner of Jesus, the Christ of God. I look at all of that. What, what all that has to do with now, the word that I want to give you. All of that has something to do with their dispensation. All of that has something to do with when they were called by God. They were vetted by God. They were called by God, vetted by God in their season, in their time, and they worked and they bear the brunt of it. Can I hear? Can I get? Can I get somebody? I heard some cracking going on, but I don't know if you're there. I don't know if you're there. I just need to hear something. Just a uh, grunt. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> something. Just let me know that you're there. All right. And so, in the dispensation of all of that, in the dispensation of all that, things was happening. They were coming on the scene. They carried the brunt of the hostility. They had to dwell in the wilderness. They had to come out of Egypt. They had to deal with uh, 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 um, Babylon. They had to go through the flood, the rain. They had to go through all of that. Even during John Baptist Day. They did all of that. And guess what? They got paid a penny. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. They got paid a penny over here, Jelani. A penny. Because how do I know they got paid a penny? Because Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. Matthew 20, 1 through 16. That's what we're looking at. Uh-huh. And I want to call this, God has hired you to walk in an 11th hour anointing. That's right. This not, is not Noah's day. This is not John Baptist's day. This is not any of those. God hired you in the 11th hour. And because you've been hired in the 11th hour, you've got to carry an 11th hour anointing. For the kingdom of heaven is lacking to a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Way back early in the morning from the time of uh, Adam up to present. Early in the morning. And he hired laborers to his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers, asked them, what do you want? And they said, just give us a penny a day. Give us a penny, Father. That's all we want is a penny. Just give us a penny. The one lady says, the one lady said, you know, I've done all of this. There's a famine in the land. I don't need a whole lot. All I need is two sticks. Just two sticks. Just two sticks. She dealt with a two stick. I called her a two stick anointing. <laughs> Just two sticks. I rub these two sticks together, build a little fire. We're going to eat a little handful of meal and we're going to eat it and we're going to die. Yeah, a two stick. But this is not that two stick. She said, I don't need a whole lot. So it was doing that dispensation. Working for a penny a day. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out at another hour, which is the third hour. See, so you had the first hour, and now you have the third hour, the third hour. Yeah, they did their thing. Yeah, they did their thing. In the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace uh -huh, and said, go, uh, said unto them, go ye into the vineyard, whatever's right, I will give you. They went their way. David, and the boys and the fellows under his regime. Again, he went out in the, the sixth hour. Yeah, there you'll find Elijah and Elisha uh -huh, in their dispensation. And, and, and then you'll find Hosea in that dispensation. The ninth hour, John the Baptist in his dispensation. Uh, again, he went about the sixth and the ninth hour 
and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out, found others standing idle, says unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? <laughs> Why stand ye all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man has hired us. You know, being idle is the devil's playground. The devil loves it when you're idle because no man has hired you. You almost got snuffed. You almost got hired on the wrong team. You almost got, you, was, you, you were picked and you were following his rules. You, you, you were learning his strategies to do what the devil said doing. He just wanted to kill you. He just wanted to steal, kill, and destroy you, but you didn't know it. You, your head was on the chopping block already. You didn't realize it. Yeah, he, he was trying to end your life because no man has hired us. He says unto them, go ye unto, go ye also into the vineyard. Somebody has already set the feet. Go ye also into the vineyard. But then he tells you something that he did not tell the others. <laughs> what is it that he, he said, whatever is right that ye shall receive. He didn't tell the others that, but he told you this. He says to you, whatever you say, if, if you have faith by the side of a mustard seed, say to this mountain, be it I remove, and, and, it, and you, believe, you believe it and don't doubt in your heart, it shall move. But he hired you. And you said, that's good. Whatever wage you're paying, I'm good with that, Lord. What, what, whatever. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you send me, I'll go. Speak, Lord. I'm here to follow. And so you came on and you saw other workers, and then you just felt that, that's fine, Lord. I'll work too for a penny. He said to you, whatever's right now, I'm going to pay. But you didn't ask for anything else. You said, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe it. You shall have those things you've asked me, but you've asked nothing. Henceforth, as you asked nothing in my name, you ask not. You have not because you've asked not. When you've asked, you've asked to miss whatever's right that ye shall receive. But you didn't ask for anything. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers. <laughs> call the laborers. And when you call the laborers, give them their hire. God's about to give you your hire. He hired you, but God's about to give you your hire. Beginning from the last until the first. <laughs> God's about to give you your hire. Yeah. Beginning from the last until the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny and they were happy with the penny that they received. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. They likewise received every man a penny. It's not the 11th hour workers who are sad here. It's not the 11th hour workers who are despondent here. But it's those who came on before the 11th hour workers. They suppose that they should have received more. They likewise received every man a penny. They also received a penny. What was the value of the penny? So listen, before you start being disgruntled, Know the value of the penny. I'm getting ready to close already. I, I, I already see it. But it's the value of the penny that's going to set the stage. When they had received it, they, grunt, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, these lads have walked but one hour. Thou hast made them equal unto us. You've made them equal. Noah, Moses, uh huh. Oh, J David, Elisha, Eli, Elijah, Elisha, 
Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, John Baptist. And, and, oh, y'all don't hear me. You made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. We work, we've went through the Red Sea. We have crossed the Jordan. They didn't do that. We went through the wilderness. They didn't do that. We hungered. They didn't do that. We get a penny, and you're going to give them a penny too? Hold up. Uh, but, but, but hold up. Don't, don't, don't underestimate the value of the penny. They didn't know the value of the penny. And they're grumbling at the value of the penny. He answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine ears, go thy way. I will give unto this last. Uh -huh. there, there it is. That's talking to you right now. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? See, you got to you got to see that he's good. He's not being bad. By giving them a penny. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Uh -huh. so, so, so you have to know the value of the penny. If you don't know the value of the penny, you're going to murmur. You don't know the value of the penny, you're going to fall out. Don't fall out because you don't know the value of the penny. So the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called but few chosen. Listen, listen. Rejoice in this eleventh hour. I'm only talking to eleventh hour anointed people. I'm only talking to people who God hired you for disanointing. I said that. That's right. God hired you for disanointing. What anointing is that? God hired you to walk in an eleventh hour anointing. And guess what? You too are going to receive a penny. But hold up. Let me share what the penny means. The penny, the penny, and we're not going to just stay with the penny, but there's an anointing about you that you're going to walk in, and they're going to walk in it. The, the, the payment is a penny, but in the penny, that, that means you get eternal life. That means you get to be with him forever. That means that you get to walk in the presence of almighty God. That means that you get to, to, to have a say-so in his presence. Everything that he's giving you, he's bringing you online with that of everybody else. To behold his presence, to behold his glory, to be with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone through some things. I know people have died for this. But then you come a late comer, a late bloomer, and you get to get... You get to have the same thing that they get to have. All for a penny. The penny represents eternal life. But not only that, in this 11th hour, anointed people, you're able to do some things that Noah could not do. Deborah couldn't do it. And the woman that, 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 that took the head of the enemy, threw it over the wall, you're going to be able to do some things that she couldn't do. Mm -hmm. David was king of a kingdom. Yeah, and he couldn't do this. And, oh my God, there's a few people who did it. Hear me now, hear me now. There's a few people who were walked in this thing. They couldn't do it. They, In some cases, they did it, but it was not their profession. Hear me. They did it here or maybe there. But this was not their profession. What prophet was it that raised the lady's son? It was Elisha. That she to he told Gehazi to go in and go in and take my staff, raise, put, put it on him, put it on him, and, 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 and then but, but that nothing happened. And he went in, he stretched himself upon the sun. He breathed into his nostrils. He laid himself, he put his eyes upon his eyes, his mouth upon his eyes. He breathed into him, gave him resuscitation. And that dead son came back to life. Remember that? Remember that? 
But that was not his gift. God used him, but that was not his gift. He was a prophet, but that was not his gift. You can be a prophet, but not walk in the gift of miracles. You can have eyes to see, but that doesn't make that you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Oh, God. I, I, I'm going to have to stop because I'm, I'm, I see that about to take me a whole nother direction. This is about to take me to, to, to some places because people thinking that because you're a prophet, you can do all of that. You can just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prophets. See, there were prophets and there were seers. Prophets and there were seers. But not every prophet has the gift of healing. Not every seer was a prophet. Y'all don't hear me. I'm going to mess somebody up with that because somebody gave you some erroneous teaching. And just, they thought because you could see uh -huh, that you're the prophet. That's not always the case. That's not always the case. See, see, what really makes you a prophet and a seer is having relationship with God. Balaam could see, but he didn't have relationship with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old prophet that lied to the young man of God, he saw some things. Uh huh. But he, he, he really he, he really didn't have that type of relationship. He lied to him. And the man ends up losing his life. If it wasn't for that prophet, that young prophet would have lived. But that old prophet said, I'm a prophet just like you. He was on his way home. He was going where he was supposed to go. He was not trying to be distracted. But the, the old guy said, hey, I'm a prophet just like you. Hmm. And that's when he disobeyed God. We know the rest of that story. But God had brought you in this 11th hour to do some things that none of the other greats in the Old Testament was able to do. And it goes like this. And these signs shall follow you that believe. <laughs> in my name, you shall cast out devils. You're going to lay hands on the sick. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. You, you're going to lay hands on the sick, Mother Lewis. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. This is that anointed of this 11th hour calling. You have that 11th hour calling. 11th hour working. You can do some things that the first hour workers couldn't do. The third hour worker couldn't do. Six hour, ninth hour couldn't do. In this hour, you're going to be able to do what Jesus did and more. There's only one thing. It shouldn't be a catch. It should not be a catch, but it is a catch. What's the catch? We walk by faith and not by sight. And everything you do, in this 11th hour, it's got to be by faith. It cannot be by uh, 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 something that you've learned from the secular. It cannot be something that you've thought of from your culture. It cannot be something that you've bought into from tradition. It cannot be your traditional anointing. It cannot be that. This, this right here in this 11th hour anointing, is you have to have relationship with God that requires you to walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't matter your education. Whether you have a whole lot of it or don't have any of it. it doesn't matter about that. This is where you get to see God from a whole other perspective. You get to be about his business because you've been following his lead. This is where you have relationship with him. This is where the word believer really come to play. Where as you believe him, not everything, not every, you don't believe every secular thing out there. You don't believe every person out there. You don't believe every, all these other, no, 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 no. You believe God, everything that the Lord tells you. Everything that he tells you. He gave you his son, Jesus to Christ. He said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. And you must become a believer to believe his word and believe that. And if you believe that, if you would just simply believe that, 
that this is the one that you will follow. This is the one that you'll believe and not another. And that you're going to do what he says to do. You're going to stand on this word and obey him. And when you do that right there, when you do that right there, watch God do an awesome thing in your life. Watch him change your life. Watch how, oh, y'all don't hear me. Watch how, uh-huh, this 11th hour anointed. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I told you. Mute your phone. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needs to Thank you, Jesus. Mute your phone, please. Mute your phone. Thank you, Jesus. Watch how this 11th hour anointing turn things around for you, which allows you to do things Elijah could not do. Jeremiah couldn't do it. All these were great prophets, noted prophets, prophets who spoke what the Lord says speak. But you get to do something they did not do. You get to cast out devils. You get to lay hands on sick and they recover. This become your profession. Just like prophecy became their profession. But in this dispensation, you become son of God. They didn't call them sons of God then. But they get to call you son of God. You got to see yourself as son of God. An extension of the Christ of God. You got to see yourself doing what the Lord God, Jesus did on the earth. And the only reason why he did that become an example to all of us that we're able to do what he set the example for us to do. Everything he did, we're capable of doing it. But your mind cannot be scattered. You can't have scattered brains and scattered thoughts. You have to be right there and to see God doing great things in your life. You have to see this. You have to see it. You have to see it. You have to see the Lord opening doors. You have to see the Lord setting this standard for you. You have to see it. You have to see that he's already paved the way. And the Lord hired you in this 11th hour to do that. Don't you know the Lord could have brought you in the same dispensation as Noah? He could, have, he could have raised you up in the same dispensation as Elijah, Jeremiah. The Lord could have brought you in the dispensation of Methuselah. He could have brought you in the same, he could have, he's God. He could do anything he want to, but he did not do that. He saved you for last. He saved you for this dispensation. Y'all don't hear me. The Lord saved you for Mississippi. He saved you for Arkansas. He saved somebody else for Alabama, for Georgia. He saved somebody else for Mississippi and, and, and for, for South Carolina and Florida. He saved you for such a time as this in this dispensation as 11th hour workers to carry an 11th hour anointing. He set the stage to the world to invite you in it. Because there's something different and unique about you. Something that God already see in you. And this is what he says. The Lord says of you. Mm -hmm. I know the thoughts concerning you. Mm -hmm. The Lord says to you, I know the thoughts concerning you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. And I'm going to bring you to my expected end. I know the thought that I think towards you. Don't you know, don't you know, don't you know that you are a spirit being possessing a flesh body? Don't you know God could have called you a long time ago? You've already been in the bosom of the Father. He could have called you a long time ago in a different dispensation. But instead of that, he brought you forth in this one. Now what you gonna do about it? In this dispensation, he want you to carry the anointing for this season. God hired you for this anointing in this dispensation. Hallelujah. Don't drop it. Don't squander it. 
Don't drop this anointing. Now you run with this anointing. You run with this one. This, this thing right here, God has designed it just for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with that, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to say much anything. Well, I'll probably say something at the end. But this one here, this one here, you are capable of carrying it. You don't even need somebody to vet you because the Holy Ghost vetted you. The Holy Ghost is also vetting you right now. Your trials, your troubles, your hardship, they are vetting you right now. So you're being vetted by the Holy Ghost because God actually have the last say so over your life, not man. God allow man to be in your life for a specific reason. But this 11th hour anointing that's upon your life has very little to do with man, but has everything to do with your relationship with God. Carry this anointing, acknowledge him, trust him and believe him and watch how God turn your life around. Father, I thank you right now for all the things that you've done. And I pray now that somebody get the gist of this message in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Mother Lord says back into your hands. Amen. Thank you, Apostle Williams. Again, another great word. The floor is now open for any comments or, or questions or uh, what is just been given to us from Apostle Williams. I would take just a moment to say thank you for that for that word um, and how it touched my heart, my spirit, and I was thinking this, and I, I was thinking that when I was, you, you're called to work for that penny, you you might only see the penny of the financial benefit, of the financial blessing of, of working for that penny, but while and, and this, this is this is this is me. It may not be everybody, and I'm not claiming it to be everybody. But while you're working for that penny, and you're laboring in the vineyard for that penny, you gotta think about the things. Well, you don't have to think about the things. You just need to realize that while you're working for the penny, there are things that you're being kept away from. You're being protected from while you're working for the penny. All you may be able to see is the penny. And 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 as an example, I, I would I would use COVID as an example. And and God may have called you to do something during COVID that kept you away from the the germs, that kept you away from the, the, the problem, the situation. You didn't catch COVID, you weren't involved in COVID because you were doing something else that God had called you to do, no matter how small it may be. And uh, it, it's just been put in my heart that I've been listening this week. And, and I was praying and, and asking God to watch over, protect, and keep those who have a, 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 a beginning anointing, a small anointing. You're not you're not called to big things yet. You you hadn't been called to, to have large things yet you're you're in a small anointing and and um uh, I, I thank god for those that that have um not i don't know how really how to put this but have not yet been been called to do big things mm -hmm. uh you have not yet i say yet mm -hmm. because it's coming but but not yet and 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 um uh, apostle was talking about the cave of Badur. You you you're still in the cave, <laughs> and and everybody else is out moving about doing things, and and being known and being seen, but you're in the cave, and and for such a time as when God needs you, you're being prepared, and and don't don't get uh, overly excited, and uh, 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 don't get uh, too too ambitious. Just 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 understand that God is using you right where you are. Mm -hmm. And he has a purpose for, for taking you through the way he's taking you through. Mm -hmm. 
if, if mm-hmm. you take off path, you, you're going to find yourself in, in peril. If, if he takes you, if he, if he just runs you through, you're going to, you're going to give credit to the wrong people. You're going to, you're going to begin to, to, to acknowledge the wrong source, uh, a, a misguided source. So, so sometimes God doesn't just run us through and lift us up, uh, real big and real power. I, I remember it, 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 years and years ago, um, when Jake first began his, his ministry, really when he was beginning his ministry, and I was just getting into the ministry, and my thought was, Lord, why why can't I, I be like Jake? Why can't I, I do and be be like Bishop Jake? Why can't I do and be that? Well, well God didn't call me to do and be That's right. a Bishop Jake. Mm-hmm. What, what he was a Timmy Brown, somebody who could who could talk to a, a drug addict on the street. He needed somebody oh, no. who could minister to 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 a, a, a somebody who didn't who didn't yet have the faith, didn't yet understand the faith. Somebody who needed some special help, some special work, and 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 so it, it, it's a different anointing. Sometimes I listen on the prayer line, y'all. It, it, it just amazes me. And and I, I keep myself in order. I listen sometimes with Brother Jelani. And Brother Jelani can just take a, a word and just turn it into a whole sermon. And just 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 preaching. And then I, I listen to Brother Slater. So he get on the line and he gets so excited, so fired up. And I'm saying, Well, Lord, why can't oh, I no. just, just take a word and just do it? Well, God didn't call me to do that. God didn't, God didn't call me for that. I have to realize that he called me to work for a penny. And, and that penny is, 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 is causing me to reap other blessings uh, because I'm working for that penny and, and I see the value of that penny. I can, it's, it's causing me also to see other things that he's doing in my life at, at a slower pace, at a different pace, at a different time. So I have to thank God for that, and I give Him praise, honor, and glory for that. That that um, I'm I'm not, you know, and, and this is this is something I, I want y'all to understand this because I don't I don't want anybody to take it wrong. There is no jealousy in this thing. There is no envy right. in this thing. Right. I love, Amen. I love what do I love what Brother Slater does? Amen. I love what that does. I've heard those guys. I've heard. Uh, 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 the uh, prophetess Bass. I, I love the way she comes on and, and, and just expounds in the word. I, I love those things and I, I listen to those things. And, and there's no jealousy there. It's not like, oh, I got to be like this woman of God. I got to be like this man of God. No, no, no. I have to be what God has made me to be. And, and God me to do things in a way that, that I do them, that I see them. So, so somebody has been working in the vineyard since early in the morning, and, and they've worked a whole day. And then here I come stumbling in at the last hour, and I get the same anointing or the same blessing that they got since they've been working all the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it, it, it's not something to be envious or jealous about. It, it's more something to understand. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that God has called you for a different purpose. God has called you for a different, uh, y- y- it's altogether different. What you do is so different. It, it's just so different. I, 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 when, I, when I get on my call on the prayer on the lifeline, uh, and it, it's always amazing to me how it makes me smile when uh, Sister Kim says, good morning, uh, welcome to the lifeline. And then she takes a pause and she says, Enjoy. I just I just love the way it, it comes out. Uh, what it what it means, what it says um, to those that are coming on. But but that's uh, she's the only one that could be anointed to do that. I I couldn't do that. Uh, others couldn't do that. And and we sometimes take the small anointing that's in our life and we try to uh, value it next to somebody else and what their anointing is. We and that's that's such a mistake. Please just just walk in the anointing that you've been called to walk in, 
Realize the importance of it. And let God move in your life. It, this is the, the hour that you've been called to do what you do. This is the hour that I've been called to do what I do. This is this is the hour that we, we've each been called to do what God has called us to do. Don't get so so wrapped up in, in what other people can do. That's right. Uh, do, what, do what you do. Because we are all a part of the body. The same body. It's one body. We all have a different function. Uh, my fingers have a different function than my toes. I, I don't. I don't know if you're a finger, if you're a toe, if you're a fingernail, if you're an earlobe, uh, or, or what it is <laughs> that you've been called. But do what you do. I'm. I'm so happy that my eyes don't get jealous of my feet, and my my hands don't get jealous of my ears. Uh, that, that we all it's all working together it's one body and i just thank god for that i thank god for the word this morning i i've, I've been able to, to just hear it and uh all this week i've, I've just been able to soak and, and listen to the word and it's just been a, been a blessing uh to be able to do i thank god for that uh, and i appreciate that so i i just wanted to say that this morning be what you are do Amen. what you can do do what God has blessed you to do. Don't don't get hung up in what in what uh, Sister Deborah does. Don't get hung up in in, in what Prophetess Bat does. Don't get hung up in in, in in what Overseer Margaret does. Don't get hung up in in, in what Brother Prophet uh, Overseer Jelani does. You know, and and when you think about it, uh, I, I I don't know uh, what the limit of my calling is because I hadn't been tested in certain areas yet. And now I can go out and seek tests, or else I can wait until God calls me to mm -hmm. the test. Uh, and I say wait until God calls you to the test. Don't go looking for tests. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, he'll call you when he's ready for you. Amen. So just stay prepared. And, and when I say wait on the Lord, they don't wait. Don't just sit there and wait. Keep studying. Keep mm -hmm. preparing. Mm -hmm. Keep getting ready. Keep keep praying. Keep keep lifting the Lord. Keep doing what you're supposed to do, so that when you are called for that time, mm -hmm. for such a time, you will be ready. I, I just thank God for the word this morning. That's all I'm I'm going to say. I, I I'll just end it at that. And and, and this say in Jesus saying, I enjoyed the word this morning and be blessed. Everybody on the line, just be blessed. Amen. 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 Overseer, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you for that word. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Come on. Amen. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can go ahead on, Brother Ricky, because I know you have to Go ahead. Have I have to say, ladies first. Amen. Good morning. God bless us to you all. God bless your pastor. Amen. I just really want to thank God for allowing me to be able to chime in this morning. It was really in my spirit to chime in. So I thank God because I heard what I needed to hear this morning to encourage me, to strengthen me, because I was having some questions. Amen. I was asking, I was saying to God this morning, I said, Lord, why is it that, you know, we can't fellowship? Why is it so much jealousy in the body of Christ, you know? And I just thank God how, because he know how to encourage us. Amen. I thank God for the penny this morning. Apostle, you did a great job with that, and I thank God for that. And I thank God how our labor is not in vain, um, that we don't have to be like anybody else. We just need to walk in the place that God has ordained for us and when we do that we won't get in trouble right. and i just thank god for his protection amen how he covers us amen from the enemy when the enemy desire amen to lay snares and trap god know how to cover us and we have to allow him to do that so i'm so grateful and i'm full this morning i must say i really really enjoyed it this morning so god bless us to you all and um keep me in your prayers amen i'm done amen amen, amen. Amen. God blessings to you. Amen. God blessings to you, woman of God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Master, I tell you, that was good. I enjoyed that. 
Oh, yeah. You had me on the toe for a minute. I'm driving down that road. I said, 11 hours anointing. I said, let me hear what he got to say. Amen. And then you begin to break that thing down. I said, oh, okay, okay. I got that. I got that. Amen. And then Mal, uh, Overseer Brown come and just put the ice on it. I said, oh, my God, my God. I couldn't say nothing, but I just enjoyed what I heard. It was just so encouraging, you know, and, you know, just where you are, where you are right now in the Lord, you know. You know, I, I just thank God for the growth and where, you know, uh, you are. It's, and and how, like Overseer said, that you thank you. You know, grateful to where God has has you, and you just know that you know greater has come. But right now, stay humble. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, see what God it. has for you. You know, uh, that that just meant so much to me. That meant so much to me. I just learned to stay in my lane. How I call it, staying in my lane. You know, whatever God has done for me, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord for it. And that's why I say I enjoy, I said earlier when Sister when Mother Vanessa asked if anybody want to say something, I was so thankful for who you are, your uniqueness. You know, you 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 like we look at one another and we look up to each other, pal. Mm -hmm. And we admire, you know, the things about each other. And, you know, but our desire should just be, you know, uh, uh, doing whatever God requires us to do. Mm -hmm. And and don't get me wrong, your anointing, your what God has anointed you to do is, is 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 special, it's unique, and I need that. But, you know, I'm looking to the Lord to take me higher, to do great things in my life. I'm not going to let what I see in you, you know, hold me up, and all I want to do is just be like that. I just want to, oh, I just want to pray like that. I want to know. No, I want what God has for me. So I want to stay ready and stay in place for God to do the work in my life as well. But what you have is definitely helping me on my way, on my journey. What you have, that uniqueness, that which God put in you, that anointing, I need that push. I need that pressing. I need that encouragement. Amen. Amen. I need that. Praise God. And that's why I want to say it. When I want to hear from God and I get on the line and I hear somebody else's ability or talent or gift that God has, ble has blessed you with your anointing, that 11-hour anointing, ooh, when I get that, I say, oh, I can go rest of that day now. I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay now. Amen. Oh, so I'm thankful to the Lord for the word. That was just so encouraging. Amen. And uh, like I said, you got me at the beginning. That's <laughs> to say 11-hour anointing. I said, where the world are you going with this deal? Eleven hour anointing. But that was so unique. And God just has such a way of just, you know, uh, 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 blessing us uh, through the word and giving us some greater, you know, knowledge and understanding and allowing me to look at that scripture, you know, in a whole new way. But I'm thankful to the Lord because every way, you know, that I look at it, it's, 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 it's greater level. It's greater level. You may have been enlightened because you enjoyed what you heard. But then when you read it again, and when you look at it again, and when you hear it again, oh, my God. Amen. I tell you, it takes you even higher. It takes you, amen, to a better place. It, it, it renews. It changes. It helps you. Oh, my God. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much amen. for that word today. I, I, I appreciate it. Now. Amen. Amen. God blessings to you. God blessings to you. And, and, and you know something so unique about that is? What's so unique about this, and it says unto the, um, the, the scripture, the scripture says, verse 6, and about the 11th hour, he went out, found others standing idle, says unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And uh, they said, because no one have hired us. He says to them, go ye also into the vineyard, whatever is right, that shall you receive. Oftentimes, and Overseer Jelani has seen it. But Ricky, I know you've seen it. Overseer, Amen. Overseer um, um, Brown has seen it, Timmy Brown. And a lot of our sisters, all of you have seen it. There's nothing new. How many times have you seen people get hired on a job they don't want to do no work. 
once they're hired on the job. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, we call them slackers. I mean, yeah, y'all, so, y'all know what them slackers. But, but Ricky, you drive a truck, but you know good where everybody didn't want to take them load unless there was something real, real tangible in it for them. And you've not always mm-hmm. just drove car, but other things that you've done, you've seen people while you were carrying the load, others sitting back chilling. We all have seen it. And then we try to still bring that same mentality over here in Christendom. The Lord has hired us for a job, and we still want to sit idle looking and put our mouth on others who are really casting out devils and really doing the will of the Lord. And But it's not happening in your life because you want to talk about them. And it's not happen. It could happen. It could happen in everybody's life. You've been hired in the hour to work, but not to come around and just stand. A uh, uh, notice: Go ye also into the vineyard. Whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. So you've been called into the vineyard to work. You see the call to the vineyard there. And then he's telling you you gonna what you're gonna get paid for, but you don't see the rest of it. It just verse eight says, So when uh, so when uh when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard says unto the steward, Call the laborers. You were called to be a laborer, not to stand, not to argue, not to complain, but to work. Call them and give them their hire. Uh so again, in this eleventh hour. The Lord has called us to work. We want to ensure that we put in our work. We want to ensure because not in this scripture, but another scripture tells us that the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Meaning that we who are laborers, there's an axe laid at the root of the tree. If we don't produce the work, because we got to produce the work, the fruit is the work. He that bears no fruit could be cut down. <laughs> Cast to the fire. You ain't getting no penny. Uh, but the one that worked, <laughs> he's gonna prune you so that you can produce more fruit. So you can produce more fruit. So we want to make sure that we're just not standing talking about those who are really putting in work. You've been called to work, so now it's time for us to just do the work. And um and that comes the best, the best training is that. OJ, OJT training, on the job training. Just do it as you go. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, the line is open. The line is open. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And to you. I'm cute here. Oh, you got, you got me up here just, I'm just smiling from here. <laughs> I don't know where to start, but um, um, I was about to ask you, I put my application in, but um. <laughs> I just love the fact. I, I think it, when you started, when, I want. I want. I really want to go over everything. I'm so anxious, but um, it just it, it, it pricked me. It felt like you were pricking me, but <laughs> it's just like the fact that um, in life itself, I think about when you started from just the beginning and how you got to take heed to your elders and everything. I mean, like uh, it's to me. I feel like it's teamwork. It's a football team. Everybody got their own special talents and. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. We all work together, and, and we all just do our part. It'll be a wonderful team. I'm thinking about the whole body of Christ when I say that. It's just wonderful. Um, um, and when you when you talked about John the Baptist, I just wanted to put that put it in there. But um, even with the when you started from the Adam all the way to John the Baptist, and him preparing the way, just making everybody getting everybody ready just for that that coming of God. And I just I just like that. It's like um, I, how can I put it? Um. A hospital when you got the nurse, you get the one who gets the gloves and one gets prepped for this and this and just apparently and, and just being able to work. I can just tell you so many stories. I'm all over the place right now, but um, even me with the loans wise, I drive trucks or not, and I was I was about to be one of those complainers that I, I you got me going here and there and this, but and I make it to the place of my destination now, and everybody's getting paid the same thing. Nobody's making more than the other. We all. <laughs> out here working then you carry that load to the next person i think about that if your teammates if they're out there in that field all day working i'm, I'm sorry guys i'm gonna put it that way but if everybody out there working and they get tired you come in at 11 hours you pick up the ball and, and help the team out it don't even matter we're gonna win it 
all together. We're going to win. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. But I love it. I promise I love it. Man, I told my wife this morning. I, well, yes, last night I told her, I said, man, it's a wonderful man of God. I mean, I know God's proud of you daily, constantly. Um, always, just, you just, you're doing the, the utmost for God. I know he's, he's pleased with you. Um, um, I can talk about Brother Ricky, um, how he prepared away from me, he opened the door for me. He might not see it that way, but when I met him at the company I'm with, I know he's gone now, but um, I thank you, Brother Ricky, for just opening the door for me just to get on the lifeline and get so much teaching and, and just allow me. Well, you was a vessel. You probably didn't know. You, you were a vessel of God, and you opened the door for me, and just to open the door for so many others just because I met you, and I remember – Late nights, we'll be on the phone, and long days, 11-hour drive, and all the way up here, I'm back in Calhoun right now. But this days, you kept me motivated to get to get to the end, and, and now it's easy to me. Now. I hate to say it's easy, but I don't mind working in it. And just, it, it, <laughs> it's so many ways you can go with it, but I love it. I love it all together. And I'm um, not to take anything for anybody else, but Sister Melissa, um, I, well, our brother Brown, he already said that already, but it just, it just, it's wonderful being a part of the team. That's all I want to say. I'm going to leave it at that. And everybody have a wonderful morning. I got me some here. I'm going to leave it at that. That's it. That's it. Everybody have a blessed day. To God be praised. To God be praised. We thank God for you, Brooke Q. And don't ever think that all of this that you're going through and everything that you're taking from this is for nothing. It's not for nothing. Um, I don't remember uh, Overseer Jelani Brown when he was in this capacity as you are now, but I'm sure it will happen. I, I don't remember Brother Ricky when he was in that same stage as hunger as you, but it, it was there. He was there. He, he was there. And uh, I remember when I was there in that same place where you are, hungry for the word, got to have it. I just want more of it. Got to have it. it you know, I thank God for it. You don't always see where it's going right then, but trust me, it's working for your good. And God has great things that he wants to do in your life. Stay right there. Some of us can see it unfolding. We can see it happening. We can see who you are, or who you're about to become. Some of us can because some of us, God have given the gift to be able to see that. Some, we're just hoping for the best. But nonetheless, for those of you who can see, continue to pray for a man, this young man, that the Lord will continue to show himself strong in his life and that he would be everything that God has uh, 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 desired of him because God know the plan that he think toward him and his family. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of good, and they're not of evil. God's going to bring him to the place that God has designed for him. And we're just going to be there on the sideline cheering him on. So continue to pray for him and pray for all of us because all of us is in that same capacity, providing that we are hungering for the Lord, for more of him. Amen. So you have my prayer and my push. You have my prayer, and my push. And uh, I, I, I see things unfolding for you. I see things unfolding for Brother Ricky. Oh, my goodness. I see it happening. And, and Brother Ricky right now, he sometimes be all over the place. He just running and running and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, his time is coming. Oh, God, is his time coming. And uh, sometimes I be wanting to talk, tell him, calm down, my brother. Calm down. Calm down. Just calm down. And just chill for a moment, because after a while, you, you you're going to be going so much. If you're not careful, you'll get burnt out. And so he's going to need to manage his time wisely now. But how do you tell somebody that when they're burning, and the wick doesn't look like it's not about to go out no time soon? You want them to burn. You you want it to burn, all right. And so. Before you, 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 you uh, um, Overseer Brown, Timmy, uh, Timmy Brown, do you do barbecue? Do you barbecue? Me, yeah, I barbecue almost every other day. See, all right, good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So <laughs> when you first get your, when you first uh, get your fire started in the grill, 
when you first get your fire started in the grill, can you put can you put the meat on it then? I, I let it burn for a little while. There you go. Let it burn a little you while. Know, grill, make, it, make sure everything is, is burning evenly. Yeah, and, and yeah. Oh, let the grill get hot. Let everything get, get hot. It, it all gets evenly. It's burning evenly, and I got a good, consistent fire. Exactly. Yeah. And whether you do it with gas or whether you do it with oak on the hickory or whatever you burn it with the real wood, you don't want to put the meat on there right away because you mess around to burn it up. But when you get yeah, the, yeah. the grill hot, when you get the the the, the 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 rack hot, and you get everything just like you want, because the flame is going to be real hot at first, but then when you get it settled mm -hmm. right where it needs to be and it's settled down to the right temperature, then you can deal with the meat. Uh, but if you do it yeah. too soon, you're going to mess it up. And so sometimes yeah. when they're burning, just let it burn down to where it needs to be. Just let it burn. Just let it burn. You don't have to put water on it. Just let it burn down to where it needs to be. And at that place, when it's at the right temp, God can use it to go even further, yeah. even further. And I see a lot of people in their racing. They're, they're racing. And they start off just sprinting real fast. They didn't pace themselves. And at the end, they lose because they start off fast. They start off wrong. But when you just pace yourself and get in there, you don't have to be the front man. Don't be the pace setter. Just just be in there somewhere. And then when it comes down to the end, then you, you know, you pick up your pace. And then a lot of time when you step it up, they don't have the energy to step it up. <laughs> they don't have the stamina or the endurance to step it up. But you do because you were pacing yourself the whole time. Am I right, overseer? It's not given to the swift, but those that endure. There you go. That's right. That's right. So I thank God for that. And so I see things happening. And sometimes you just cannot just go and say, hey, 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 calm down. Calm down. Slow down. Do this. Don't do that. Do that. Now, sometimes you just have to observe it and just, amen. You just know it's going to produce a bountiful harvest. And so when I look, when I look and I see who is with us, who's fellowshipping with us, amen, it's going to produce a bountiful harvest, amen. And I just trust that they don't burn themselves out before they get where they're going. Don't burn yourself out too soon. Just right. maintain pace, maintain pace. You, you don't have to be everywhere. Just maintain the pace. Uh, and I'm going to put this back in the hand of Mother Lewis in just a few moments. I was on another prayer line. Somebody had asked that I would come on a prayer line. And uh, I did. And uh, they've heard me speak. But then it says, uh, we just want to support the other men. So I did. And the young man was on there. He talked about how the Lord delivered him from a broke neck. Say so he wasn't not sprained neck, but a broke neck. He had a broke, a broke neck. The doctors gave him up. But his mother prayed for him. His mother prayed for him. So all of in his message had to do with healing. All in his message had to do with deliverance and salvation. It was a real high note on, on healing. And then as I listened, others was saying things about how much they enjoyed uh, the word. And the Lord just gave me to speak a word into his life. Disturb the gift that is already within him. Don't deviate. Just stir it up. Stir it up. You you don't preach a dynamic message like this about healing and deliverance. And God can. And he brought you out of this thing. There's only one less thing to do. One more thing to do now is that you would uh, stir up that gift of healing. Stir up that gift uh, of deliverance. Stir up that gift that is already within you. You've set the stage. God inhabits the praises. God come into the praise. He comes in that moment. He comes in, Brother Q. He comes in that atmosphere that you've stirred up. He comes in that. He's in that moment. And so give him what you was talking about. Build that stage. Build the moment. And so you, you well, you've built it, not minister in the moment. You, you've talked about him. All right. You talked about healing. All right. Your, your message was about healing. Your, your, your outline was about healing. 
you, it was about deliverance and you talked about salvation and, and that's the message. I see that now minister in that moment, minister in it. And uh, I asked the person that was in charge of the line, if they would allow the man of God to just do what he, he, he gave an outline. He gave the outline about it. He gave the message on it. Now they will allow him to stir it up. And then he did come back and he did pray. And in the midst of his prayer, my God, people was even more blessed because he prayed such a profound prayer. And not only that prayer, but then when they come back, they're going to hear testimonies about what God did, what God did. And so there's so many depths that we must walk in on this lifeline that we've got to get, we've got to become more mature in other things so that we can start doing what we've been called to do. And so uh, each one of you have been called to greatness, but now you've got to uh, hone in on that greatness, hone in on that moment, what God have called you in. Stir up the gift of God that is in you. And sometimes that might be all that you talk about. You might just... Every time you come talking about healing, 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 healing this and healing that, I know where you're going. And then somebody else might just talk about uh, uh, um, order, protocol, order, protocol, order, protocol. I know where you're going. Somebody else is always talking about miracles, miracles, the miracles, the miracles. I mean, every time you, miracles, they're, they're going to become a specialist in that area of miracles. Let God use you in that area. And then somebody else is always, every time you, every time they get a moment to, to talk, they're talking prophecy, <laughs> prophesying. Amen. Guess what? Then, then, then occupy that thing, walk in it. Let God uh, 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 um, shine you and buff you up in that area that you're already so drawn to. So we're going to be teaching on these things and because God, that's what God want to do. That's what God want to do. And we have capable people um, like any of these overseers can teach on these lessons right here. That's going to bring somebody to that place that they're going to have, have, have stirred up the gift of God that is in them. And they're going to pray a prayer of faith. And immediately before the line is over, that person is going to be healed. Before the line is over, their eyes are going to be opened. Before the line is open, that miracle is going to take place. Before the line is open, that thing that they prayed and asked God to do is going to already be done. Because you got people in place who can teach it. We don't have to get somebody outside of the source to teach it. We have the teachers here. We have the believers here. We have the stage here. And now we're going to just do it. So God blessings to you. Mother Lewis, it's back in your hands. I'm enjoying everything that has been going forward. Amen. Somebody else still may have a word to say, though. But I'm enjoying everything. I do. Amen. Good, mo Good, Good morning. morning. I just was listening, and my focus really has been drawn to um, verse number seven, where he said, they say unto him, because no man has hired us. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I hear the voice of God saying, don't wait <laughs> for man. There's no need for man to give you your assignment. Mm -hmm. I've already given it unto you. So go ye into the vineyard. Go ye into the vineyard and work within the kingdom of God. And mm -hmm. whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Whatsoever you need for the mission that you're called to do, I'm going to give it to you when you get there into the vineyard. Whether it's to go and preach the gospel to the poor, whether it is to heal the brokenhearted, whether it's to deliver the captivity or recover the sight of the fire. Or what is to set at liberty them that are bruised are to preach the separate year of the, of the Lord. I'm going to give you exactly what you need mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for no one else to come up out of that situation. And that's what I got out of that. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much, woman of God. So profound, so true. Amen. And we thank God for that. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. You guys are and I, I thank God for what you just said too as well. Are there any other 
Amen. As always, we thank God for each and every one of you that have come on to the lifeline, your participation, and just all the words of encouragement and prayers that um, continue to come from this line, that continue to come from each and every one of you individually. Um, so with that being said, we're going to have um, Minister Kim do our announcements, and then we'll call in our visionaries. Was what was uh, Overseer Jelani about to say something? I didn't hear anybody, but if he, if he did, I missed it. I'm, I apologize. If he wants to say something, he can. Okay. 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 Okay